Welcome to What's the 4 and 1, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. I'm and Courtney Rashawn. And I'm Essence mm -hmm. Samaje. Yes, today we're talking about Rachel Roy, Cameron, Gladys Knight, Rob Kardashian, Black China, and the uproar exploding over Zoe Saldana yeah, yeah. as Nina oh Simone. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, you don't want to miss Kizzy's take on the Republican presidential debate and her Caribbean cookup. But first, let's get a quick take on what's popping. Well, you know designer Rachel Roy mm -hmm. and now says she's launching Rachel, Rachel uh, Roy the Curvy Collection, which is for women sizes 14W to 24W. Mm -hmm. So she's tapping into the two. $27.5 billion market. With the of, big girls. Wow. Yes, yes. The big girls <laughs> are, get, are getting styled up by Rachel Roy. Um, and singer Gladys Knight avoided a speeding mm. ticket from a police officer. Huh. She was in the car with her driver on her way to um, record a um, something with to do with church. She mm -hmm. had like a church um, function going on. Mm -hmm. She was with her driver speeding down the highway. Apparently she gets pulled over. Mm -hmm. The officer realized it was Gladys sitting in the back seat of the car. So he's like, listen, I won't give you a ticket, but I need you to sing to me. And Aww. it just so happened to be oh the officer's God. birthday. Yes. Oh, no. Me not trained to Georgia! No, 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 no. Exactly. No, no, no. In Utah no. of all places. <laughs> so, um, but Gladys is a practicing Mormon. I, which was really? my surprise. Really? I had no idea. Yes, yeah, she's okay. a practicing Mormon. So that's what she was doing in Utah. So they got that they got off with a ticket, and the officer let them go. And he was just so happy that Gladys could sing Happy Birthday to him because you know it happened to be his birthday. So she got a treat. Is that in Georgia? I don't know what she's saying, but she's saying something. Happy birthday! You yeah, probably happy birthday. happy birthday to no, she you. Know, no, she no, she no, she no, 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 Nika, no, no. Okay, sorry. No. Mm. That's right. Anyway, That's moving all. right along. <laughs> rapper Cameron, y'all know Killer Killa Cam. Killer Cam in the house, yeah. Yeah. yeah, dust rapper. him off. He's not cute. <laughs> dust him off. He's not dusty. <laughs> no, Cameron's he's he's cute. He's cute. No, he's cute, but I mean, dust him off. Like, what has he been in for the past like two Represent years? He's for been the, the light skin brothers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, light skin drug dealers from back in the day. <laughs> Well, speaking of drug dealing, um, Cameron um, announced with Reebok that he's a new special edition sneaker called Purple Haze. Oh, that's right. That's right? Yes, it is. Well, it's not it's, that I know anything it, about that. I can't with you guys. <laughs> Well, it's titled. Uh, it's um. It's a. It's an ode to his um 2004 LP that he had that was titled Purple Haze, yeah. um, and the sneaker happens to be bright pink. Excuse me, bright purple with a pink insole. He loves so that. He, he loves pink. pink fur back like, like a yeah. man. I love that, that, that shoot he did with the pink fur, and the glasses, and everything. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing with him. Now, since he's not doing music lights, it's all about the endorsements that he gets. Absolutely. That's where he gets most of his income from. So, well, Cameron is making money? Like, doing well, deals on the well, side. Apparently, really? yeah. Well, yeah, he just got the deal so. with Reebok, and apparently, um, he's releasing another uh, album called Purple Haze 2, and he has a web series called The Giles Investigation that um, document his days of being a alleged drug dealer. Mm. So that's interesting. Alleged, alleged I, drug dealer. Yeah, oh wait, <laughs> that's not even <laughs> yes, that's not I that's not even the half. Streets, okay. Cameron. Now, no, Cam. now in, in Kardashian news, Rob Kardashian is all over social media posting and professing his love for Black China. And wow. he even said that he would disown his family Whoa. if wow. they you that's know, continue far. continue that to disprove that wait a minute. of his relationship. So he's like, listen, family I love this woman. I don't care if my little sister's dating her baby daddy. This is the woman that I want to spend my, my the rest of my life with at this point. And he's all over social media. And he's like, and if you guys aren't aren't with the program, then I'm not going to be bothered. I'm going to disown you. So this oh is the God. flip of the yes. target. I mean, yes, exactly. the other way around. Exactly. So, so it's not the Kardashian cooch. What is that? The Kardashian cooch? It has nothing to do with no, them. What? It has to do with Black China living her life. It could go the other way around. Kylie Jenner dating Black China's baby father. They, you know, families right. might break up, but it's all about getting it together because the baby's not going anywhere. Right. Right. It's a family affair. Uh huh. Like right, the fit. Okay. You have a big one, big family reunion. So yeah. Kylie's really upset. Is that what's going on? Kylie's yeah. upset okay, because it's, it's about but, Rob Kardashian. No, but I'm to, asking. I'm asking. Like, what's the? What is Kylie saying that's that's making Rob say, "I don't care about my family. I, I, I love this girl. I don't care." It's Chris. It's the yeah, mother. It's, it's the mom. Yeah, she doesn't like Black It's China. Chris. Uh, Chris Jenner. Chris Jenner is just alarmed by the fact that he is dating Black China and that his little sister is dating, you know, the father of, you know, Black China's child. So, you know, there are reservations, there are issues. But on the flip side, you know, Chris Kardashian, excuse me, Chris Jenner is 
major media let's do this let's cause controversy let's make a buck okay. so i think at this point mm -hmm. she's like you know what let's just put a spin on it and maybe mm -hmm. we can capitalize it keep you hot in the news mm -hmm. and cause a little controversy and maybe we can make some money off this relationship so let's we'll see what mm -hmm. happens it's funny you okay. mention this courtney because i just saw the other day black china mentioning asking her um followers on instagram should i start a show would you guys watch should I, if i had a show right so maybe, yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, maybe. having a show maybe. yeah this is all yeah. a prelude oh, to something show. exactly Exactly. way larger and I'm uh -huh. sure that everyone's gonna cash in opening up a back up to Rob so he's not just doing his stock line he could do other things you right. know they get endorsements from the shows that they do they well, can I have a name for it what once, once you go black oh you know, <laughs> <they're> black. <laughs> At this point, I think the, um, that Chris Jenner is just happy that Rob is willing to even allow himself to be in the public at this point because you know yeah, he was just isolated really and so for yeah. so long yeah. and he didn't want anything to do Adrian with yeah, yeah he didn't want anything exactly. to do with um, media or the show or anything right. like that. Exactly. So so hopefully Rob will you know reappear and you know. We wish him well. Hopefully, Black China doesn't break his heart. His yeah, mom. exactly. What, what's the deal with Hollywood? Do you guys think that they have a melanin problem? Of course. Melanin <laughs> problem. <laughs> what? Like, you mean like um, a lack yes. of mm -hmm. representation of dark skin yes. women yes. in yes. film? All non white skin people, period. Yeah, you can yes. see that in Hollywood. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, we'll keep it locked and we'll keep talking about it. Thank you. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411, and now we have What's Poppin'. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so mm -hmm. Nina Simone, mm -hmm. Blackface, I love her. I love Zoe you. Saldana. Mm -hmm. What is going on, people? Man, she was always the role and she took it. I mean, that's what's going on. I mean, there's so few roles for black women. Yes. So it's like she was like, okay, you want me to do it? I'm doing it. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think she t took a lot of thought into, oh, my God, I'm too light. I don't match this. I don't match that. I'm just I'm going to do a part that I was offered. I mean, that so. also she is African. She identifies as Afro-Latina. Yes. Yes. She's black. And I understand that she's may, may not be as dark as Nina Simone, mm -hmm. but she's right. an awesome actress. Yes, she is. So you right. can't take too much away from her. But I think that what's happening mm -hmm. is during the time when S Nina Simone was, you know, trying to make her way, it was really that, you know, jigaboo wannabe kind of thing going on. And it just seems so in your face, Oscar so white. Mm -hmm. Light skinned women were getting so many roles where dark skinned women were not right. getting any. So she was very, she's an activist. Right, you know, she was an right. activist. Yeah. And there's so many darker skinned girls that people have suggested that, like yeah, Viola Davis. By Same by nose Dola. shape, um, wider nose um, shape, bridge nose. But I mean, yes. Lupita. They could have even had yeah. Gabrielle yeah. Union do but it you know, if they wanted she, to stay politically correct and, you know, in the realm of working black Zoe actresses. But put Zoe in blackface. Yeah, with the, with the prosthetic nose. You see nose. what I mean? With the prosthetic nose. To put her in blackface and then alter her features. So it's a biopic. Normally you cast correctly, right? Mm -hmm. when, yeah. What was that? Right. When, they that, tried. That went to Houston. Right. Remember the, what they did? Oh my God. That was, it was horrible. That was a fiasco. But she did exactly like Whitney. But people were so upset. Or Aaliyah. Right. Or Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Because that was I think terrible. they could have casted better as well. That was Aaliyah. terrible. That was terrible. I think that they could have casted better. I, I do. But you know what? Not for nothing. Her like estate isn't really piling on at Zoe Saldana. They're like, okay, look. You're not really the one in control. We don't really have an issue with you per se, right. but we have an issue with the process. No, they we were think... flailing incels at her. At no, Zoe. no, but like... they said this is what they said okay. on Twitter. They were like, "We are not in control of that Twitter account. That was a family friend." Okay, and that's right. that's who okay. Because I know that that's what they, they yeah. were. There were insults. I know yeah. they were insults. But this has been an right. ongoing thing in terms of uh, Zoe Saldana taking this role with Nina Simone. This was going on since so, last year. Yeah, yeah, when she first. So it, it was really mm -hmm. controversial, and I guess mm -hmm. they got to the point where they said, "Hey." We're cat. We casted her. We stand by our decision, and this is what we're gonna but do. But the family's fine with it. I think everyone should cool out. You know, true. You yeah, know I mean, what? they're not fine with it. You know, they really want the document, the the, the film, to be done correctly with right. the right people and mm -hmm. all that. They have issues with the script as well, so they they have problems all the way around. But they don't want people to pile on against Zoe Saldana. Oh, they're yes, like, Zoe Saldana. Put, um, yeah, and and um, yeah, just her because I know her daughter said mm -hmm. she doesn't mind. But they have right, a documentary. Little, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. already a documentary on Nina Simone that's And excellent. everyone was like, yes, that's, that's it excellent. and everything. So and you everything. should probably check out that yeah. documentary first and mm, then, yeah. you know, go Hopefully see Zoe. This. Because Zoe, I would not turn down a job either. Yeah. So, I'm not mad at Zoe. I'm get not that mad check, at you, girl. Girl. But we, you know, we get it. You, We all know that there is that divide mm -hmm. in black culture, light skin, dark skin, feel, feel pan, house, 
person. Mm-hmm. We know what it is. <laughs> I like that. Thank you for putting that up. Thank you. <laughs> it's sad, but too, it's, it's sad that we had to go through the whole Willie Lynch story that came across that even started all this light yeah. skin, dark skin mess, it's making sad. people you. Black African right. people even hate their skin t- color ourselves. Yes, yeah, um, you know, alongside other people, uh, like disappointing us or being prejudiced against us because of our skin color. Right. Excellent yeah, point. Right. Okay, we'll be right back with an interview with Asha Boston. Stay tuned. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome to What's the 411, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I'm Onika McLean, and who we have with us today is Asha Boston. Hi, Asha. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Yes, welcome to What's the 411. So Asha is an amazing visionary, and we just had to have you on the show. You need to tell us all about the, well... I don't want to like give it away, I guess, the miseducation of black girls in New York City. How did that come to be? Sure. Well, the miseducation of black girls in New York City is an event that was thrown by my documentary series entitled The Dinner Table. The Dinner Table is a five-part documentary that aims to change the narrative for black women in media, and we also offer media literacy and self-esteem building workshops for high school and college students. Um, The workshop came about because we wanted to create a platform outside of our documentary um, to have young women share their truth, and we're very inspired by Lauryn Hill, so we decided to name it after Lauryn Hill, The Miseducation of black girls in New York and it was just a wonderful event. How do you target the women that you well the young girls that you're going to help? Um, through the workshops that we do. Um, as I mentioned before we do workshops at high schools and colleges to talk about media around. literacy mm-hmm. yes and we also show the film and so through that we develop a mailing list and, and a following um, especially on social media of young women who really want to stay engaged with our content and so it was very easy to kind of you know just get the message out and bring them into the room especially Especially since they knew that their voice was going to be heard and it was going to be the centerfold. How can we find your documentary on social media or on oh, the yes, website? Oh yes, sure. Um, our website is www.thedinnertabledoc.com doc.com. Mm-hmm. Um, there you'll find all of our information. If you'd like to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter and Instagram at Dinner Table Doc, and you can find us on Facebook at The Dinner Table Documentary. So tell me a little bit about the documentary. How did you start? How did you get involved in it like what happened what you know ignited that kind of fire in you Yes, um, it was actually inspired by Essence Magazine. They had a contest um, mm-hmm. where they were looking for films about multidimensional black women, mm-hmm. and I thought that it was something that I can do, and since I have a background in journalism, documentaries just came naturally to me, so I decided to enter the contest, and I missed the deadline, but I say that happened <laughs> <laughs> divinely because I ended up with this amazing project on my hands that I was able to share with an audience that really needed it, mm-hmm. and so it shows stories of young women who are just doing extraordinary things that you don't normally see on television like we have an african-american girl who sings korean pop music right you don't see that every day (laughs) we also have a young woman who is a journalist her name is ranisha bing and she won an emmy at 24 for doing a news story with nbc and you know we just show their stories um just through through different dinner table stories and it's an amazing experience and just highlight it yes so who gets invited to this dinner table like who is it everyone <laughs> is, it, is it the social media gurus is it the business woman is it just the uh, 12 year old girl like how, how does how does it work what's the yes, synergy sure. like um we bring in high school students college students and professionals for a night of very intimate networking so we kind of break down the idea that there's going to be a vip section with a vip t- table and only the important people would sit here um we we really let everyone get an opportunity to talk to someone who can possibly change their life because as you know sometimes all you have to do is, is tell someone what it is you want to do and what you want to be, and you don't know how they can help you. Yes, it's so true. Just open yes. up and be honest and yes. be transparent, right? And Absolutely. Then it, you're like 23. Three. Three years <laughs> old. Like, how are you such a boss at 23 years old? 
I, I believe I've been a fighter all of my life. Um, right. Yes, I was born prematurely um, at two pounds, one ounce. And um, I, I don't remember the story myself, of course, but my parents, you, right? yes, my parents <laughs> told me that I, I've always um, just had this spirit in me to get things done and, and to really live for something. And so, um, you know, just realizing I was um, lucky enough to realize my purpose very on very early on in life mm -hmm. and so once I solidified that I said you know what this is something I have to go for a full force I've been running nonstop empowering since. girls to do their best yes to be their best selves yes so where's this dinner table going after the New York table is it going anywhere else oh yes doing? it is we are going on tour and I'm very excited about it <laughs> <laughs> it's going on tour Poppy do you hear this <laughs> Yes, um, after our dinner event in December, um, thanks to social media, the word spread very quickly about what we were doing. And so people in different states started to request that we visit those different states and we bring the event there. And so we're actually starting off um, on March 30th. I'll be headed to Atlanta, Georgia mm -hmm. to host a dinner at my alma mater, Agnes Scott College. Mm -hmm. And we'll be headed to Mississippi right after and we'll see what happens from there. Oh my gosh, so the dinner's on tour. Yes. So, so how do you start the dinner? Do you start with the documentary or do you just, that's how it works and then you... We I'm usually like, start, invite me in. Like, oh, give me a it's little. an experience. Like, give me a little. <laughs> From the time you mm -hmm. step into the room, it's just a very different air. Everybody is so warm and welcoming. Everyone is happy to see you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're kind of ushered to your table or you, you choose where you want to sit. You know, we allow everyone the opportunity to, again, mix and mingle with everyone in the room. Um, and we show a nice video clip in the beginning um, just to get everybody in the spirit um, with some videos of women in media who are doing phenomenal things. Like we show clips of Viola Davis's Emmy speech, mm -hmm. you know, just to get everyone excited and, and ready for what's about to take place. And um, we, we allow some talking. And once the entrees come out, we ask everyone to do a cell phone blackout. And we really encourage people to connect at the table because a lot of times we're so connected to our phones, we don't realize the, the art of conversation and the beauty of conversation. So we yes. usually request people turn off their phones and if they really don't trust themselves, they can hand it to someone next to them. <laughs> and, you know, we just allow time for, for networking and, and not just networking, but really soul searching and getting to know who you are and who someone else is across the table. And then after that, we allow people to turn their cell phones on if they want a social media, their dessert. And, and oh yeah and hashtag yes. the dinner table yes. um again which has helped us tremendously um but you know it's, it's a really inspiring and encouraging event um sometimes we'll bring in speakers and we'll honor them with community shiro awards to show that you know no matter where you get in your career it's very important to turn around and give back and, and help those coming up behind you um because for more than anything we want our students to know that success is possible but it's also nothing if you don't help others around you yes yes that's amazing so Thank what about sponsorship how does someone help you how would a company or an organization come and donate to your cause how does that work what Absolutely. Um, well, for our dinners, um, we were very lucky to have Brooklyn Magazine, Ebony Magazine, and Homegirl Magazine um, sponsor our gift boxes. Mm -hmm. So they sent so much literature, and it was so great because, again, we're all about sharing the stories of women of color. And so it was great to have this physical literature so once the attendees left the event, they're able to still, you know, kind of hold on to mm -hmm. our principal. Um, and also we've had bakeries in the neighborhood, you know, just give us tons of, of baked goods for the event. It, it's been incredible the support that has, has come out, especially through donated goods. All right. Ebony's doing this Woman Up initiative now. I went to a luncheon uh, last week, uh, Saturday. It was really amazing. So I know they're probably going to help again. So, oh, but yes. that's so great. Thank oh you. my goodness. What else do you want to tell our audience? Do you? Oh my goodness. Well, if you have, <laughs> I want to tell you everything. But again, if you have the opportunity to check out the Dinner Table documentary, please visit our website at www.thedinnertabledoc.com. And there you'll just find a, a portal that will take you into a completely different world of, of what everybody says now, black girl magic. Black girl magic. <laughs> black girl magic. I mean, Women's um, History Month. I Absolutely. mean, you're just doing amazing things. I'm just so honored to have Thank had you, you Thank here. Thank you so much for having me. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. 
Now we have on the carpet, and I hear that Kizzy is <laughs> piping mad. Mm. What's going on, on Kizzy? Listen, mm -hmm. today I'm calling on the carpet the Republican Party. Mm. What's new? Listen. <laughs> Listen. It was inevitable. Listen. The whole yeah. Republican Party. The whole Republican Party. Not, even, not just Donald Trump, because I always... Oh, sorry. He's Donald Trump, wrong. I always, always call the carpet. But this week, it's the Republican Party. So Donald Trump, you know, he's been leading in all the polls. He's been winning states. He got like seven out of 11 states, Super Tuesday, Saturday, he got stuff. And everybody's like, oh, my God. Getting, getting serious. Getting oh. real in these streets. Yeah, it really well, well, is. How did this happen? You know, the, the Republican Party stands for, you know, truth, justice, the American way. We're great people. And it's like, wait a minute. Hello. Going back all the way to the 60s when you had the Southern Strategy with Nixon, who was basically like, let's bring all these white racists into the party by, you know, Good. giving them coded language to let you know that, you know, we're for you. They stood for racism, xenophobia, homophobia, sexism. And now all of a sudden they're like, oh, my God, Trump. We, we can't have Trump. Right. I'm like, what? Can I ask what? one question? Yes. Does GOP stand for good old party? <laughs> Does grand, really? grand old party. Oh, grand old party. Same, grand. same shit? <laughs> okay, I just want to No, but it's like, you know what? I feel like the Republican Party has sown this, and now they're reaping this. Donald Trump is the ideal candidate based off of what they've been putting out for the past 45 years. I mean, wow. I think Donald Trump that's, is that's just playing lot. his role yeah, at, again as a... It is, though, but seriously, but it's been happening. It's been, they've been coded. You know, states' rights, welfare queens in the 80s. Remember with Ronald Reagan and, oh, you know, welfare right. queens were black. And so we got to take away all the, 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 the good stuff. Because, and they're buying you know, stakes, too. Don't yeah, yeah. But actually, yeah. But actually <laughs> he said. Clinton took, took it away and made it workfare, which did this. Well, that's bad, too. A, di a total disservice. Like, we have to think yes, about that, but that's, too. That, too. But I'm saying the Republican Party has built their name on that. And you cannot take away that Southern strategy right. of appealing to white races in order to bring more people into the party. Right. And now you can't act like, and remember when Obama first got elected? Oh, Donald Trump was like, is he American? No, no. Was he born here? No. Hillary well, Clinton, Clinton he, was he like, that. was he born here? No, Hillary Clinton started But Donald, Donald, Trump, Trump, Donald Trump, Trump chimed in and made it a big issue. And then the Republican he Party did. did not disavow him. And well, now they want to disavow him. Why weren't you doing it back then? Exactly. You this and now you're reaping this. Donald exactly. Trump is just playing his role as a TV personality. He has said that he basically made a mockery of the Republican Party by saying that long time ago, it's, he was on a radio talk show doing an uh, interview saying that, you know, if I ever run for president, it would be so easy. The idiots, the Republican Party are idiots. It would wow. be so easy to get well, votes. I mean, the people, but he's right, the people who will be voting, Republicans, they're idiots. They're stupid. They, it would yeah. be so easy to, you know... Um, what, show, over. what show was this? I want to. You could look it up on YouTube. When it okay. was an interview when he said something like this. Yeah, I mean, it's so obvious. And it, it makes me sad that he's right. He's so easy. He's easily manipulating the entire party and people's worst fears about the other. Those blackies, those brownies. You know what I mean? Right. It's like it, it bothers it's about me so the much. The blind leading the yeah. blind. But no, but what's yeah. happening to me? It's really about the economy <laughs> the because economy what's is happening right. into that the, too. The, the, right. So if if I if I tell you, Courtney, the reason why you're not successful and blah 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 is because Essence is getting all your stuff. Eventually, you're gonna. Put your focus on Essence course, and start hating right. her. And that's what's happening in middle America. Mm -hmm. And he's just perpetuating that. And I, I see it every day and I totally understand why mm -hmm. he's on the carpet and the Republican Party is right. on the carpet. But a little, just to add to that, I just feel like the Democratic Party should be on this carpet too. You know, mm. because what's the black vote? What does that mean, the black vote? All black people vote mm -hmm. the same way? What mm -hmm. does that mean? Why? Because you come into our houses of worship while we're all there vulnerable and say, oh, look, this is what I'm selling today and your pastor's down with me. So right. mm -hmm. you should probably listen to your pastor because he taught you all about Jesus. So he probably mm -hmm. will, he's probably going to lead you to my righteousness, which is the Clintons now. I just mm -hmm. think that we should just step back and try to think about what right. these candidates are really standing for. Oh, I, I agree with you. Know? Yes. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. What is, what is her but platform? But I mean, but, yeah, what is her platform? What is, her what platform? is Bernie Sanders' platform? What is, you know, Donald Trump's platform? Mar you know, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, all these people. But at the end of the day, no one should stand up there and act like this moral authority. Like, oh, no, you, you shouldn't vote for Trump. He's not bad guy, bad guy. And at the same time, you're doing the same thing, but you're just doing it undercover. Stop it. Unreal. Stop the madness. Unreal. Carpet. All, jokes. all on the carpet. Mm. Yes. Shame <laughs> on you, yes. Republican Party. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts, stop the wrecks. Welcome back to What's in the 411. <laughs> now we want to see what Kizzy has in the pot. <laughs> The hot that was pot. a very, very dramatic <laughs> intro right there. I don't know if I can match it, but what okay. you got in there, girl? Yes. Okay. Keeping with our politics theme, 46 New York State legislators led by Assemblyman Nick Perry, the chairman of the New York State Black, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, and Asian Legislative Caucus, have endorsed this girl right Hillary here. Hillary Clinton for president. Yes. Nick Perry was born <laughs> Sorry, <y 'all>. in Jamaica. <laughs> Listen, I'm just a messenger, man. I don't know who you're looking at me like that. I don't say swole. Okay. okay. In Jamaica and represents the 58th Assembly District in Brooklyn, he said, he said this, Clinton has a sustained and trusted relationship with the black, Hispanic, and Asian communities. You know what? She has a proven record of support on many of the issues we continue to tackle in Albany and our communities today, such as gun control, immigration, education, housing, and voting rights. So he's confident in her ability to lead the no. country. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts, stop the wrecks. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now we have stories that are in the pipeline. If you are looking for great entertainment, you need to get to the King's Theater. Let me show you, the, tell you about the lineup. So the Temptations, the Four Tops, March 19th. <laughs> Kirk Franklin, <laughs> March 22nd. And the Boss, <laughs> the Boss, the X Factor. Oh, wow. Lauren Hill. Yeah. That's will she be show up? at King's? I know. And will she be will sane? She, <laughs> she was okay. someone I love Lauren Hill. Amazing, amazing. She was last week, and I know a lot of people please. that went to really? see her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she's going to be at the King's Theater on April 15th. Mm -hmm. So you guys better get your tickets because, well, first of all, it's a fabulous theater. I have to go. I've never been there. Into a Lauren Hill concert. Yeah, uh, yeah. she's so amazing. Very I've very seen her so before. Yeah. She's amazing. Very talented. Yes, yes. Well, guess what? Well, that will do it for this week's edition of What's the Four and One, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Yes, and until <laughs> next week, make sure you guys check out our website at www.whatstheforeandone.com. And remember, remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, Blab, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube mm -hmm. channel, What's the Four One One TV. You guys really need to hit us up on Facebook. <laughs> I need you to comment so that I can say, so-and-so 23 said such and such. I just yeah. can't wait to do that, but you, it has to be interactive. We're going to read it. We need your feedback. We have an Instagram page as well, so you make sure you guys hit us up on that. What's yes. the form one, right? Is it? What's the form that. one? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Yes, we got, we got it all. It we got everything. Yes. We're ready. We uh -huh. Equipped. Yes. I'm Kizzy Cox, <laughs> and on behalf of Anika McLean, Courtney Rashawn and Essence Samaje. Y'all are out of order. She forgot Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. What's the 4 one We will see you next week.